All right, let's talk about how to use Block Blender. If you're a beginner, don't worry too much because you don't need to do much to get good results. The only thing I recommend is that you know the basics of how to move around Blender, like move the camera and all that. I put a beginner playlist in the description for those who might need some help. So if you want to convert things, you can do it directly in this file, but if you want to do it in a new file, there are a few different ways that you can go about it. The first way is with the Asset Browser. If you don't know how to use the Asset Browser, go to Edit, Preferences, then down at the bottom, File Paths, and again at the bottom, we have this spot for Asset Libraries. You just want to click the plus button to set you know, which path you want to use, and then you can put this file that you downloaded into that folder. So I'll just open up a new file just to show you. And then down here, I will open up the Asset Browser and make sure you set this to whatever folder that you set it to. So this might take a second to load depending on how many assets you have. So if you add the Block Blender file into the correct folder, you'll see this one right here, Block Blender Importer. There's also one for the free version too, if you have that. So you can just drag it in. Now over here, if you click the minus button on your numpad, that will you know, make all of them smaller. It'll make all of them closed. And this here, the Block Blender Importer, you can actually just delete this. Everything is imported now. So that's the first way of importing everything. The second way of importing things is by appending. So if you're not using the asset library, you can go to File, Append, and then navigate to the Block Blender file that you downloaded. And once you find it, you can click on it. I recommend going to Object and searching for Importer. And you can see we have it right here. You can just append that and then everything will be here just like before. And again, you can just delete this. So now that we have everything imported, I'll show you how to actually add it to things. Just to have a good example of something to convert, uh, I'm gonna use the Sketchfab add-on. You don't have to use this. Um, you can use this on pretty much whatever models you have. Um, the models that I'm showing will be free. I'm gonna search for house scan. And right here we have a gingerbread house, so I'll just import that one. Okay, so this is really big. We should scale it down. Everything is still selected. And if you know it's not selected, you can just hit A to select things. And then we can hit S to scale it down. So I'm going to hit G to move this closer to the center. Hit 3 on the numpad so that we can see this from the side. And again, I'm gonna move it close to the center like that. And then when we have it where we want it, just hit Control A and apply all transforms. Now hold Shift and left click on one of these parts and hit Control J. Right now, these are all different objects. We have a look in here. We have a few different separated objects. So if we hit Control J, they'll merge into one object. And we can just delete this empty right here with X. Okay, so if we go into look dev, we should be able to see that this has a material on it. And what's good about photo scans is they usually have images attached to them, which is exactly what we need. So we can select this, go over to modifiers right here, add a geometry nodes modifier. And the one we want to add is block blender right here. So we need to make sure that it's using the right image. To find out what image it's using, we can go down to materials right here. It's usually under base color or emission or something like that. So we can go to base color. You see right here we have base color again. And here is the name of the image we want to use. It's called Mesh Model 4 U1. You can also go to the shader editor if you want and just find whatever one is being plugged into the color. And go back to modifiers. And this one is called Mesh Model 4 U1. So now we can change the resolution right here to be something smaller. Right now, these blocks are, you know, one meter cubes. So we can make this something smaller, like 0.2, maybe 0.1. Make this as small as you need it. So this has a decent amount of detail now. And if it's a little slow in the viewport right here, we can make the instances real, which is this option right here. And that usually speeds it up in the viewport a little. If you want this to be like in-game scale, then you should set the resolution to one, like this. And I would recommend uh, going into edit mode and just scale this up with S until it's the size you want. This looks pretty good. So this is in-game scale now. And if we want to walk around this to see what it would look like if we were in the game, we can hit F3 and then search for walk. And we have walk navigation right here. You can select that. With the mouse, we're controlling the camera. We can use WASD. And at the very bottom of the screen, we have some extra options. So the scroll wheel, We'll make it so you can speed up and slow down. Uh, and if we hit tab, that will add some gravity so we are actually on the ground now. For a house in Minecraft, this would be pretty big, but if we want, we can you know walk around to see what this would look like. This would be helpful for if you're actually planning on building something that you made in the game. 
But yeah, that's how you can do that. You can hit right click to exit that mode. There might be some blocks that you don't want to see. So if you scroll down over here, we have block selection and this is where you can select what blocks you want. So we can turn off utility and now all the smokers and note blocks and things like that are gone. You can also hover over these and they'll tell you, you know, a little description of what they are. So we have creative blocks, things like, um, you know, things like the reinforced deep slate that you can only use in creative mode. And we have color blocks, things like wool, things like that. So we can turn off color if we don't want those. Shulker boxes I have under valuable because it's hard to get a lot of them. We also have this collection called unused and that should be off by default. So let's just turn everything else back on right now. Say for instance, you don't want a bee nest. You can come over here where all of our blocks are listed and you can actually just search for nest because all of these are named and we can just select both of these right here and if we want these to be unused completely um, then we can hit m to move it to the unused collection right there and now you can see they disappeared so if you want to use very specific blocks you can just search for the ones you want and add them to the unused collection or uh you know to remove them or if you want you can use only the unused collection by coming down here and you know turning it back on turning everything else off. Oh yeah, I also have the skulk catalyst in here because I think it's uh, it doesn't usually <laughs> fit very well. If you don't want to search for them over here, you can also just, you know, view them too by uh, turning them on in the viewport right here. Move them wherever you want or delete them. If you want to change how the blocks look, you can just, you know, select your object and go into the shader editor. And to view the block material, we can just change this right here to block material. And now we can see all of the textures that we, you know, have available. So to go inside of this group right here, you can just select it and hit tab and that will go inside of it. You can hit tab to leave also. And this is where you can change all of your, you know, options. So if you want this to be more reflective, you can turn the roughness down like this and it will get shiny, things like that. We can also make this emissive by turning this up right here and that will change it to an emission texture. So there's no shading at all. Let's change it back though. And if you want to use a bump map, then you can just plug this normal in like that. And you can, you know, play with the strength and stuff like that if you want it to use a bump map. Okay, let's exit this over here, go back to layout, and we're gonna convert an image now. So let's just delete this. And to bring in an image, I'm gonna use the images as planes add-on. And if you don't have this enabled, you can just go to edit, preferences, add-ons, and search for images as planes and just make sure this is checked okay so now shift a go down to image and there should be an images as planes option and i have some images right here so i'm just going to you know control click a whole bunch of these just so i can show you a few and when you have them all selected you can just hit import give it a second and all of them should import so let's just convert this one right here starry night we can go to modifiers add the geometry nodes add block blender and i know the name of the image is the same as the object right here so we can just search for van gogh right here and right now this is just a plane with one face and it has no thickness so it's not turning it into blocks yet so there are a few ways you can turn it into blocks one way is by coming in here and extruding it with e you can do that and once it gets big enough blocks will appear right now the blocks are very big Another way is by adding some exterior thickness right here. And if you hover over this, it will tell you that it gives thickness to things that don't normally have thickness like planes. You can use this on any model too, if you want it to just be thicker, uh, but it pushes outward. So just keep that in mind, but you can turn that on and it will just give it some thickness automatically. You can also add a solidify modifier and I'll show you how to do that a little later, but let's turn the resolution down quite a bit to like 0 0.05. And right now we can't actually see our image and that's because in edit mode right now, this is just a plane. So we need to add more geometry and we can do that really easily by just adding some subdivisions. So let's turn this up and you can see every time we turn it up, the resolution gets a little better. Uh, I usually turn this up to something like seven because I feel like that's a, a decent amount. Let's make this even a uh, higher res, so 0 0.03, something like that. And now it's actually recognizable. And again, if this is slow in the viewport, you can just make the instances real and it should speed it up quite a bit. So now let's select this and then hit A to select everything else. Now this one is our active selection. You can tell because it's yellow. We can hit control L 
to copy the modifiers to all of the other images. And all we have to do is change the file path. So this one is called Ryu Hadoken. This one's Mona Lisa. Okay, so now we can actually view all of these. Notice that these two are supposed to have like transparent backgrounds, and so they're given glass, um, which makes sense because glass is transparent. So uh, if you don't want to see glass, if you want the transparency to just be ignored and not use blocks, then you can select it and use this option right here to delete the alpha. You just set that to one, and it will delete all of the completely transparent blocks. So let's do that with this one too, delete alpha. Another thing you might notice is that all of these are rotated. This is just how it works with the Images as Planes add-on. So if you want these to you know, be right side up, just select everything and then hit Control A and apply the rotation and that will turn everything right side up. Another thing you might notice is that at the very edge, there's a bunch of duplicate blocks. Um, and that is just something that happens when you use exterior thickness right here. So if you want that to not be the case, let's just select this one right here and turn off exterior thickness. This is when it would make more sense to actually extrude. So you can just extrude the same amount as your resolution. So hit E 0.03 and that will make one block thick like that. And you know, the edges won't be repeating like that, but let's hit control Z to back out of here. And let's add a, uh, a solidify modifier just to show you that you can do that. Add a solidify, make sure that this is before geometry nodes. And again, we want to make sure that the thickness is the same that we're using over here. So 0 0.03, 0 0.03. And now that's one block thick also. So there are a few different ways to add thickness to images. If you decide that you want to try to build something like this in the game, then um, the option I would recommend using is called show layers so we can turn that on right here and then right below it we have show layer number so we can turn that up and you can see there's the our first layer right there and this will basically just let you you know do things layer by layer to make it easier to build things uh, from the bottom up another thing we can do is convert things to mesh because right now this is just an image right here. But if we want this to be editable, then we need to convert it to a mesh. So to do that, first we need to make the instances real, which we already have. Then you can just right click and convert to mesh right here. And now we can, you know, come in here and, you know, select any of these blocks. If you want to select a whole block, you can hover over it and hit L like that. And now we can, you know, move these individually if you actually want to do that. Uh, to actually export the model as a, you know, 3D model to bring into another program or something like that, um, it's not as straightforward as you might think. Unfortunately, there are a few things that we have to do. So let's go over to the shader editor. You can see right now that our UV map is red, so that means it's it's broken. It's currently working, but we need to fix it in here. So to fix our UV map, we can go over here to object data properties. And under UV maps, you can see we don't have one. What happened when we applied it is our UV map was moved to attributes. So we can just select that right here, click the arrow, convert the attribute. And under mode, we can just set this to UV map and hit OK. And now our UV map is back and it should actually work for us. And if we go back to the shading editor, you can see that it's no longer red, which is good. Another thing that we have to do to make this work is not use this principled group. Um, for some reason, if you're exporting as like a GLB, um, they only recognize certain shaders. So instead of using this, we can just replace it with a principled BSDF. And again, I just added this with a shift A, S to search, and then you can search for principled. And I'll just remove this. You can hold alt and just drag it like that. Plug the color into the base color and plug this into the surface. So this should look fine now. Um, it should look pretty much the same as what we had before, but now we can actually export it. So make sure this is selected. We'll export Mario. Go to file, export. I'm going to export it as a GLTF right here. Under include, we can we can limit it to the selected object, which we have uh, Mario selected. Then transform is Y up, which is good. Um, under mesh, uh, this is what to include. So normally I would turn off vertex colors, but I'll leave it on just to show you why I would turn it off. I'll show you what happens when we leave it on. Uh, under material, we want to make sure that it's exporting, and I believe that's it. So I'm just going to put this on the desktop right now, and I already did one earlier, but I'm going to overwrite it. So you can export, 
And this is usually pretty quick for things that are, you know, low resolution like this. Now I'll just open it up. And this is just like the Windows um, 3D viewer for Windows 10. Oh yeah, one other thing that I forgot to do. Um, you can see that all of the blocks kind of look inside out. We can fix that really quick. The way to do that is in the shader editor, you can hover over it and hit N. Um, or you can open up the materials on the side right here, scroll to the bottom. And the blend mode for Eevee, you just want to set this to opaque. This just makes it export better. So we can, once again, export it as a GLTF. It should have saved our settings, so we can just hit export again. Okay, now it's working properly. And the colors might not seem exactly the same. And this is why I said to not include vertex colors. You can see if we come over here and I turn on the albedo right there, you can see that it looks accurate. Um, but when the vertex colors are included, it will kind of use both to, um, to like overwrite. So I recommend not exporting the vertex colors just so that it, you know, looks more accurate in here. But yeah, now you can just bring this into other programs and things like that. So that's how you export. Now I recommend setting all of these back if you, you know, are done exporting. So I'll change this back to alpha blend. I'll also delete this with X and just hook this back up right here. Okay, next let's uh, make some text. So I'm actually just gonna delete all of these with X like that. Making text is pretty easy in Blender. You can just hit Shift A and go to text. This will add in a text object. And by default, it'll be rotated like this. So you can just hit R X 90 and that will rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis. Um, and if you have this selected and hit tab, then this will let you type whatever you want. And on the side right here under object data properties, we have a whole bunch of options. So if you want, you can change the alignment. I usually like to set both of these to center. And under font, this is where you can change what font you're using. And geometry, this is how you extrude it and whatnot. So let's extrude this a little bit so it actually has some thickness. That way it'll actually work with Block Blender. And we can add a modifier. Let's go to geometry nodes add block blender and let's set the resolution to something pretty small like 0.2 we might need to set it pretty small before it starts working so i set it to 0.1 we can come back over here and uh, turn the scale up or the size which is under font right here we can just turn that up to something like five and now you can see what it looks like as blocks um, now in game this would be pretty big so usually what i like to do is change the size so it's just big enough that you can still read it. Yeah, something like 2.5 is fine. Let's try changing this to a different font just to see what it looks like. We can hit the folder icon and it should open up your font directory. If you have fonts in a different spot like I do, um, you just navigate to them. So I have some in my documents folder. I have this one in here called cute font that I think is fun. So we can change it to that. Um, and there are like a whole bunch of options in here too if you want to space things apart differently. This is still glass right now, so I want to change the colors. Uh, but to do this, we have to convert our text into a mesh. So let's actually just delete the geometry nodes modifier, select our text, and convert this to a mesh like that. So now we can add our you know block blender back on, set the resolution to 0.1, and we can select an image as our palette. And there is a palette in here that is included with the file, and it's called full palette. Now to actually change what colors you're seeing right here, we can go over to the UV editor and make sure up here we're using the one that's called full palette. Now this is what the palette looks like. So we wanna be in edit mode over here. You can do that by hitting tab, hit A to select everything, select everything over here with A2 and start scaling it down. You can see now that the colors are actually changing over here. So we can scale these down and wherever this is, is whatever colors we're actually using over here. So what I like to do is just hit S and scale it to zero. That will make it a single point. And now we can drag this point around to make it whatever color we want. And I'm moving it around by hitting G. If you wanna choose a specific block, there's another image that comes with the full version called full palette block reference right here. And it should be the same, except all of the colors are replaced with Minecraft blocks that are, you know, the same color. So you can see right now we're on the coral, but we can move this if we want it to be this color. Like if you wanted it to be grass, then you can just drag this over to the spot where you see grass like that. And again, this is rotated on its side, so we could do the same thing if we want. Uh, back in object mode, hit Control A, apply the rotation, 
no, this will be going straight up. Now, if we want this to have a little more variation in color, what we can do is go over here to modifiers, and that's what this noise section is for. So we can start turning the strength up, and you can see that at a certain point, it will start reaching out to other blocks that are close by. It's changing the color very slightly. And this is a way you can add some variation. You know, all of these options are going to change the noise texture that it's using. So right now the scale is pretty small um, and that's why we're getting all of these blobs, but we can, you know, turn that up higher to make it a lot more random and scattered looking if we want to do that. Just to make this easier to see what's going on, let's go into edit mode with tab, select everything, hit X, delete it. And I'm gonna add in a plane right here. Now I wanna give this some thickness, so let's change the exterior thickness to one right there. And let's set the subdivisions to seven so that we can accurately see what it's looking like now. If we go into edit mode, you know, this is just gonna show us our entire palette right here. But if we wanna scale this down, um, this is another way we could get some like good gradients. So we can scale this down. Let's just uh, bring it over to like this teal area right here. You can see we're getting some cool gradients and we're still using the noise. So if we set the noise to zero, the strength to zero, and uh, maybe bring it over here to the black and white, you'll notice that we have some like very clean banding right now. It's very uh, regular, just straight lines. Um, that's another thing that the noise is good for. You turn it up a little to break it up. Uh, if you want it to look a little more random, now it will. You can also scale this on only one axis. So scale it just on the Y like that and you can make some uh, more dramatic, like severe gradients that go from like really light to really dark, things like that. So right now we have our change color set to zero, which means that it's not gonna change the color. Um, but if we set this to one now, instead of basically just moving up and down over here, when it uses the noise, it will also go left and right. Um, and you'll see as I turn the strength up, yeah, you'll see that we'll get some more colors in here. But if we change this to zero, now it's just still black and white like that. So uh, it, this is uh, easier to tell what's actually going on when you're using the black and white ones, but it does also, you know, count over here too. So if we're using all of these colors right here, it will start to change the colors too, especially when you bring the strength up really high. Uh, this can be nice for like subtle color changes and things like that. So let's actually model something in real time while we change the colors. To do this, make sure that exterior thickness is turned off. And also I wanna make sure subdivisions are all the way down or else this will get really slow. So I'm gonna model a mushroom really fast. Uh, I'm gonna turn on the subdivision surface modifier right here. And I just wanna make sure that this is first and I'll set this to something like two. So now we can model a mushroom really quick. Um, I'll just extrude this up. Uh, maybe I'll scale this down so it's not nearly as thick. And this isn't really a modeling tutorial, but if you want to, you know, a few tips, <laughs> uh, we have some, we have vertex mode up here, edge select and face right here, and you can change those with one, two, and three. Um, not on the numpad, just regular one, two, and three like that. So I usually am in face select mode for this. You can also turn on this gizmo right here, uh, under here turn on move like that. I think it's not on by default. Most of this is just going to be uh, extruding with E, S to scale, and doing things like adding loop cuts with control R like that. Let's select this top face, uh, scale it out quite a bit, extrude it a little, extrude it again, scale it in, and extrude it up one more time. Add another loop cut right here, and just pull that up a little. You can go into x-ray mode up here. So I have x-ray mode on, I'll just select all of these points right here and scale them in like that and maybe pull that up a little too. Okay, so we have a mushroom now and there are plenty of ways we can color this. If we want, we can um, just select the faces that we want to use. I'll select the bottom face right here and hit control plus on the numpad to expand the selection a little. And we can just scale this down to zero over here and move this around like that. I think maybe we should expand it a little more. Let's scale again, everything down to zero. And we'll just move that over to, uh, let's move it down here in this area like that. That looks pretty good. Now we can do the same thing from the top. Just expand the selection like that with control plus. And we'll just make this red, drag it over up here 
And now we have a, a simple mushroom. And, and this is still using the noise. So if we have this, the strength set to zero, it will be much more regular like that. One of the things I like to do is use proportional editing. So to make this work a little better, let's apply our subdivision surface modifier right here. So we can apply it. And now when we go into edit mode, this should have a lot more geometry now. Um, go up here to proportional editing and turn it on. And we can just select something at the top. And when we hit G, you can see now that we have this like area of influence right here. And you can change that with your scroll wheel with your mouse. So you can uh, move this around to make some like pretty complex shapes. Um, let's just expand the selection a little and rotate it a little like that. And now it's like a drooping mushroom, something like that. Another thing that's really fun to do is rotate things. Uh, so I'll rotate it on the Z axis by hitting R and then Z, and we can kind of make some spirally shapes like this. Um, now, if you move it really far, obviously it will start to break, but you can get some like very cool results like that. So another way of coloring models is by using vertex colors. So let's actually go back to layout. And you can see we have this option called use color attribute. So now if we turn this to one, our colors will break because it's no longer using the image. It's using a color attribute, but I think we don't have a color attribute right now. So we have to add one, go to object data properties. You can see we have a spot for color attributes. And if you don't see one, you can just hit plus. And uh, I just use the default name, which is color and hit okay. By default, it's using the, the default name, which is color. But if you have a different name that you added, you can change it to that. So now you can just select your mesh and either go up to the top over here, or you can hit control tab to go into vertex paint mode. And now you should be able to just paint whatever you want like this. And this is based on uh, how dense your mesh is. So if you notice that it's changing in like very big chunks, then you should um, subdivide it. And it's not enough to just subdivide it over here. You will have to go into edit mode and either add more loop cuts or you can just select everything and subdivide it like that. And now you will have more, you know, spots to actually paint onto. You can change colors up here, um, change them to whatever you want. Uh, if you want to change the size of your brush, you can hit F like this. Um, all of the options should be up here. And there are also options at the very top of the properties panel. So you can, you know, have access to a bunch of things over here. This is one good way of making gradients. You can, you know, add two colors. So I'll add some red right here and some blue like that. If you want, you can change the strength right here to something a little smaller like that. Uh, and we can also use the blur option. If you don't see this, there should be a little arrow right here that you can pull out or you can just hit T. Um, but yeah, you can change this to blur and this will let you kind of blur things around. You know, it's just a blur brush. To explain the next part, I'm going to delete this and I'm going to add in a model that I uh, already made. Okay, so I modeled Sonic the Hedgehog and the reason that I'm using this as an example is because when we go into edit mode, you can see that the eyes are like a completely separate piece right here. And when we turn it into blocks, you can see it's like getting kind of confused as to like which color to use. So it's not sure if it should use the blue color or, you know, the color of the eye because they're very close together. So we have this other option called Boolean. And basically what it will do is um, remove all of the inside shapes and kind of fuse everything together. Um, and this can be pretty slow. So I only recommend using this in scenarios where you have things like this, um, but we can see how it works. Well, let's just turn it on and give it a second to load. And you can see now because it removed all of the inside shapes, it's uh, not as confused about, you know, which <laughs> thing to choose because the stuff on the inside just isn't there anymore. So this ends up cleaning it up quite a bit. And uh, this could be really useful for if you're just modeling with a whole bunch of primitives that are like intersecting through each other, stuff like that. But yeah, compared to this, it's much more accurate with the Boolean on. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is if you want to count the blocks. Uh, right now, the only way I have to do this is by going directly into geometry nodes. So this is a little more of like an advanced feature. Hopefully I'll find a way to do this a little better in the future, but we can go over to geometry nodes up here and towards the beginning, we have this spot right here called block counter. 
And for this to work properly, make sure that the instances are not realized. So this should be set to zero. Now you can go over to instances right here. So now we have access to all of the blocks that we're using. And we also have this area over here for the ID. So if you wanna know how many chiseled stone bricks there are, then we need to remember that the ID is 79. We can come over here and hit a uh, control shift and left click. And this will add a viewer node right here. So we can type in 79 right here. And now it will only show us the chiseled stone bricks. And at the bottom, it will tell us that there are 288 of them. We can click this little eye on the viewer to bring everything back. And unfortunately, you just have to kind of scroll and, you know, look at the names of the blocks and stuff. So we have snow, which is 56. So we can type in 56 and then turn the viewer back on. It'll tell us the number right here, which is helpful. If I turn the Boolean back on, that should get rid of, you know, some of those blocks. Yeah, and it did. All right, that's it for this one. Um, I'm planning on adding more features in the future, so be on the lookout for updates. Um, I hope you all have fun with this. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.